Uh, welcome back uh, my gardening friends well uh, it's time to get uh, the uh, broccoli in the purple sprouting bro broccoli this is claret f1 not tried this one before and uh, they've been in the uh, greenhouse grow room and they've got to a good height we'll be able to take uh, the bottom few leaves off so we can plant them a bit deeper and I've got some hydrated lime because I've taken some of the other brassicas out of the other bed and uh, we've got uh, some club root. Uh, I'll just go and show you what club root looks like. So, where are we? That's your typical root at the end of uh, a cabbage. And uh, what happens, the club root spores grab hold of it, swell it up and it starves it, uh, starves the plant of... Um, nutrients and uh, water so if you see this that has to be removed off the site completely and uh, I normally break the stalks off and uh, take them home and put them in the municipal bin now this bed was the onion bed the old onion bed <coughs> so I've topped it up with the remaining compost from where the trommel is going to be uh, so there's going to be a bit of dry compost under here which there isn't but what I've been doing on the other beds is uh, going right down I've just hit the wire there that holds the beds together and I'm going to be taking off the lower leaves they can go on the floor and rock down with the wood chips nice little root system there now I've got a little bit of slug damage I can't find the slug so I will be looking for it I'm going to plant that nice and deep then push the wet soil around it. Brassicas love having firm soil and we'll just make sure that one leaf is uh, below there. Oh, you tend to use this as a, a, a dry mulch to protect everything underneath but it's fresh, it's come from uh, the other plot I managed to uh, do that today. So we normally scrape back. You see, oh, see the wire there? That's the wire that supports stops the beds bellying out and if you haven't seen how I built all these beds then uh, why not take a look at my playlist full of information make sure that one leaf is okay uh, and there we go and hopefully we won't lose the label so we know what it's uh, what it's all about um, uh, have forgotten to add the lime but we'll just pop a bit round there on those two water that in and uh, can we see this one let's do a proper job so we dig a big hole if you have trouble with club root then uh, a little bit in, in there it tends to form a, a, a little bit of a barrier that the uh, club root spores don't like let's make sure that top leaf's uh, showing and all this mulch will dry out eventually and hopefully retain the moisture underneath I'll get cracking with this and get the rest of these in yeah so those are all in now and uh, we've encircled them with lime as well to uh, stop the uh, slugs crossing that barrier if there's slugs already in the soil then so be it uh, all these are new beds so i just planted everything everywhere so once i get back into it i'll be able to make sure they get the manure and the lime uh, at the correct time of the year for the correct crops so uh, we've just got to put up and shut up at the moment but now we've got quite a bit of purple sprouting that will be ready uh, february march and april and we've also got some of that uh, kale there that uh, should be quite productive uh, throughout the year and we've got the trusty uh, dwarf um, variety of the kale uh, I do like this sort the Sun loves it he uh, well, white fly just started to come but uh, not much at the moment uh, he gets that all blended up uh, nicely but this bed uh, has been cleared of uh, the brassicas as well and you can see that these have uh, gone quite leggy because of the other plants that were there 
but I'm sure they'll uh, recover and we can always uh, support them later on. So we're guaranteed some food hopefully uh, in the uh, before the spring. Uh, I've had a real good tidy up uh, uh, round the Swedes, taking off all the old leaves. Uh, again, in a previous video, we show, showed uh, some uh, bit of uh, mildew, etc. I'm hoping now that the sweet corn will take off uh, or just completely crash. Uh, but these Swedes here weren't very good, so uh, we'll get rid of this one now. This will open this bed up. Um, that's not as I like it, but uh, there's still some uh, good uh, meat in there and that will uh, make us uh, a meal uh, uh, on a regular basis. And we've got plenty of them. That's what the uh, Swedes uh, should look like. But what's the point if they all come like that uh, all at, uh, uh, at one go? So a nice successional crop right through uh, the winter months. The uh, cheeky prince is uh, giving off a fruit. I don't know how big these are supposed to get. Anybody that uh, knows uh, knows them, uh, just uh, leave me a comment. How long have I got to leave those for? The beans uh, have done extremely well. So are the peas. I'm letting quite a bit go to seed now, but uh, Bill and Val's uh, pom goes. Uh, again, turn your back and uh, they're growing all over the place but they're really enjoying it uh, hanging over the side of those uh, new raised beds plenty of long beans and uh, i'm picking these every other day i should be picking them every day because we've got one there that's uh, probably not quite all right oh it's snapped okay uh, you can snap them like that and if they uh, have gone gone stringy then uh, they're probably no good but uh, oh well why not one night excuse me the bull's blood beetroot uh, they're coming back again now uh, give them a good haircut and these small leaves will uh, flourish and end up um, looking like those New Zealand spinach really pleased with that lovely textured planted some more lettuce today from uh, home i'll be pulling some of these carrots today why not pull them now he says so uh, we'll just check those to see if there's any uh, carrot fly on those and we'll see those at the harvest at the end with everything else we're looking at Spring onions, uh, they haven't got white rot. I did mention this before. Um, pulled a few more out, uh, but they, they're just like, they're dying off. So hopefully uh, they're ready and we can uh, take those as a harvest. And lots of lettuce, a second sowing of the bull's blood beetroot. And uh, I'm not sure which variety these are. That looks a bit uh, strange. Yeah, that, look, that looks better. Don't know what's happened to that one. But, uh, uh, one variety. Uh, that's those ones are the Diane, and these are the uh, Sparkler Three. Try and pick the ones uh, that are ready. They look nice. We'll bring them to the harvest at the end. The tomatoes. Um, on the vertical gardening they're uh, really quite good as well yeah picking uh, quite a few regularly and they're just nice as a snack excuse me tidied all the square foot gardening beds up now and we've got some more lettuce in there from the green uh, house grow room and those lettuce are coming well that one's uh, bolted these have been tidied up, ready to go back to the greenhouse grow room to be planted up again, ready for the vertical gardening. Now, I need to harvest uh, celery today. Uh, I've got plenty of it. If I don't start now, uh, it'll go to waste uh, later on. So see if I can find a decent one and pull out. It's not very big, but um, in my salad box, that'll be ideal. Uh, I'm gonna have to try, try it now to see if uh, it's actually uh, edible. 
some nice long stalks on that it's being drawn up nicely um, through those uh, pallet collars and no doubt the uh, stalks on the inside will be better than this one but let's give this a try that's the best celery I've ever grown excellent I'm uh, quite over the moon about over these uh, tomatoes a lot of these tomatoes I did have send me I chitted them all uh, dropped them all the labels fell out the seeds stopped where they were so there's a few of these varieties now that we're catching up with uh, we know uh, what they are and uh, hopefully uh, they'll taste as good as all the rest we'll show you the harvest at the end the parsnips are doing really well yeah we're supposed to wait for a frost but i'm not uh, there's uh, plenty of parsnips in here one parsnip will last me uh, two weeks so uh, if there's 28 parsnips there's enough there for a whole year and hopefully i'll still be harvesting them in uh, march uh, and uh, april of next year so let's get one out i've just had a fertile round to make sure at least i get one that's uh, reasonable technique for these is to push twist not massive but we'll see what we've got on the length Obviously we can only eat uh, up to there, but uh, at this size, that's a good meal for uh, on a Sunday, roasted or steamed, however you prefer them. If you are new to my channel, um, the tap, I use long and raised boxes for the carrots and the parsnips. You're not supposed to give them manure, but I actually give them the manure right in the bottom of the um, tubs and uh, that parsnip has gone way below the uh, four pallet collars uh, right down into those nutrients and uh, you get a nice parsnip like that and just further on parsnip leaves don't rub those on your arms because it can make your arms blister uh, at the end of the video there'll be uh, a video on all the the injury that I suffered from me giant parsnips well worth looking at and well worth making sure you keep your gloves on and long sleeves if you're handling them this is the potato bed where we suspe suspected blight wasn't sure so we took all the horns out we had a little look in the front of the first view I haven't looked uh, on the far rows, so we'll start off with the Sarpos, go on to the Picasso, then the Kestrel, and then the purple ones, and we'll work our way through.
as you can see no dig permanent bed we've got some nice potatoes there I've never grown potatoes that big before at the far end mainly because I've mainly done them in containers but uh, we'll get those uh, little platters a close up these are the sarpo mirrors uh, I had seed sent to me about four years ago the seed pods and I grew them on and grew them on never did very well in containers but they're good these are the uh, Picasso from Allen that's a good spud and uh, these are the kestrels again some decent potatoes these are the purple variety that we found on um, hashtag starting a new allotment uh, I spent uh, 18 uh, 18 months doing that allotment so the house DIY got behind and uh, that's why you're seeing one or two videos on DIY. Just show you what I'm up to. Pink fur apple from Steve's allotment. And these are the white ones. I've got two rows of white. Um, not sure of the variety, doesn't matter. Cracking spud steamed. And with it being a permanent bed, all I do is I work my way along the rows. I'll always leave one potato in, but some of those potatoes saw me going really deep and I could you can actually feel them because the grounds are soft and then just bring them to the surface and uh, what stays in will grow next year so I won't have to plant any giant variegated onion the one that got the virus that's out now drying and that will be uh, set uh, to seed uh, in November already seen these on previous videos but this is my uh, shallot harvest uh, we've got uh, Bedfordshire champions there these are the uh, banana shallots zibaroon and then these are the red Florence shallots uh, Alan sent me some seed to try and uh, they are a uh, good cracking size and Mrs K likes them as well the uh, radish Diana that replaces the carrots that had the uh, this disease motley dwarf virus oh, the blight and it's spread by the carrot willow aphid so I'll be fully enclosing my carrots next year at the start of the season we had issues germination uh, got worse and worse and I said I wish I'd planted them all at the same time but I'm glad I didn't now because the successional sowing has helped because we're looking very good there now so we ended up with some celery a cracking looking parsnip some nice purple potatoes pink fir apple my own sarpo mira white potatoes from plot one that were found Picasso potatoes from Allen at the Dawn Chorus plot the pink fur apple were from uh, Steve's allotment and some nice kestrel now I know if those were on my dinner plate all nicely cooked I'd be really chuffed a bit really happy with those potatoes spring onions sparkler three and Diane radishes some very nice Nance carrots. I forgot to tell you, the potatoes, most of the potatoes did have scab. A small onion. <laughs> two nice uh, shallots, two different varieties from Allen from the Dawn Chorus plot. The seed were. A selection of uh, long beans and French beans uh, from uh, the pom Pomgo uh, from uh, Bill and Val's allotment. A nice looking swede, the one we saw earlier, the small one had gone rotten, so hopefully the rest are okay, but we'll never know till we pull them. A cucumber, a lovely colourful selection of uh, tomatoes, hopefully you can see that, we'll look at the end. A lovely uh, small yellow courgette, a zucchini, but it's followed by a rather large green courgette zucchini. We prefer them a lot smaller. My lunch, lunch box isn't that big, honest. Some black Boscoop Glory grapes. 
some nice autumn fruiting raspberries with the autumn gold being the yellows and some nice blackberries and a very nice uh, red apple and we finish off with uh, a nice selection of uh, salad leaves a mixture of lettuce beetroot leaves and uh, the New Zealand spinach tomatoes look absolutely great but a cracking harvest and uh, hashtag uh, shed wars and uh, hashtag uh, team over the pond um, it's all about sharing our experiences good practices and what we do uh, that's my little harvest it's not massive not going to weigh nothing but I can harvest that regularly uh, during the week when I get a chance and that's what it's all about uh, eating sharing and uh, enjoying it uh, it's good for the body and good for the mind and uh, Babette who's in the garden has asked whether she could see my lunchbox I think she was smiling at the time but I keep mentioning my lunchbox so if anyone else wants to see me fill my lunchbox uh, with my wares from the allotment please stick it in the comments and uh, I do like the comments the interaction thumbs up thumbs down that's what it's all about I'll get back to all the comments if I don't reply back to you it's because it's hidden because if it's attached to another comment the same comment I have to go looking for them it doesn't give me a notification so always give me a heads up if there's something you need to ask happy gardening to you all till next time my friend to half for now hashtag team on team over the pond and shed wars bye bye for now